Hi friends and my dear students. Today we are going to see very important concept of photoelectric effect in 12th syllabus of second volume. In this topic, many scientists want to conduct their own experiments and give their results one by one. We are going to see regularly one by one. First, Maxwell theory. According to Maxwell theory of electromagnetism, predict, predicted the existence of the electromagnetic waves. The existence of the electromagnetic waves. It means that light is nothing but it is an electromagnetic waves. Electromagnetic waves. Though he succeeded theoretically, he is unable to he is unable to explain experimentally. That's why another scientist, Mr. Hertz, in 1987, sorry, 1887, in 1887, who conducted an experiment and proved the electromagnetic waves. Who conducted the experiment and proved the electromagnetic waves experimentally. He considered a high induction coil, high induction coil. At the end of this induction coil, a two spherical sphere, two spherical sphere was mounted at the edge of the induction coil. Now, he applied the high voltage to this induction coil. What will be happen? There may be a spark, there may be a spark by the, produced by the spherical sphere. Now, after the spark which was happened, the charged particle in between these two spheres are moved fastly back and forth so that the electromagnetic waves are produced. So that the electromagnetic waves are electromagnetic waves are produced. Now he wants to identify whether it is electromagnetic waves or not. For that he need help of a director director and he made a copper wire bend with the circle as shown in the figure. With the help of this instrument he analyzed what are the waves that was exhibited by this experiment and finally he got get the answer through this instrument purely it was electromagnetic waves. That's his experiments. But here one problem is of course the spark is very tiny and could not be able to visualize. That's why he made some alternative arrangements to visualize the spark which was produced on the spherical sphere. For that, he sent the ultraviolet rays. He sent ultraviolet rays, ultraviolet rays, UV rays, to the sphere. Then what happened there? Whenever these ultraviolet rays hit the surface of the metal, again, there may be a vigorous in the spark only because only because the electron on the surface of the sphere are bombarded or come out from the sphere that's why the spark are very vigorous 
but even though he couldn't be able to explain on that time after some times there may be a reason for that and want to find the reason at last he came to a conclusion there may be a emission of emission now there may be a emission of electro magnet along with electromagnetic waves there may be emission of photoelectric emission photoelectric emission photoelectric emission so the vigorous of the vigorous of the spark only because of the ultraviolet rays which impact this spherical sphere the photoelectric emission which was produced that is the uh, important of the experimental result here one famous uh, one famous and very important concept that we may understood the experiments initially shows that and also maxwell suggests that light is nothing but electromagnetic waves it has also proved that atom magnetic was produced and was generated by the director but when we are applying the electro ultraviolet rays on the surface of the spherical sphere then the photoelectric emission which was happened or which was emitted so it explained both electromagnetic waves electromagnetic waves and photoelectric emission photoelectric emission so that the same experiment prove that dual nature dual nature this is the same experiment prove that wave theory as well as particle theory that is a very important concept which was suggested by the hertz next another scientist another scientist that is halvax halvax a famous scientist hall works hall works experiments hall works experiments he supported his hertz experiment why the spark is vigorous why the spark is so vigorous when the ultraviolet rays hitting on the surface of the metal sphere that's the thing that he want to find out for that he conducted an experiments halls was uh, hall box experiments for that he consider a zinc a pure zinc there is no charge pure zinc disk like this and was connected with the non conducting substance of insulation insulation that is non conducting substances it was stand it was not allowing the current flow through this non conducting substances but whereas this metal or linked with suitable copper wire or any other conducting wire with a gold relief electrostatics gold relief gold relief electroscope gold relief electroscope as shown in the figure gold relief electroscope are you clear gold leaf electroscope as shown in the figure initially here there is no charge there is no radiation then there is no charge that's why this electros uh, electroscope electro
electroscope leaf electroscope leaves electroscope leaves leaves gold leaves electroscope leaves are very close to each other in absence of the electric charges in case when we allow the ultraviolet rays when we allow ultraviolet ray, rays hitting on this zinc metal what will be happen what will be happen here a tremendous incident that was happened that means the positive charge are accumulated on the disc accumulated on the disc and it was conducted through this wire to the gold leaf atras scope so what positive 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 the both are the same polarity so that it repels it to each other so that it widely opened it's widely opened in this process here only positive charge whatever the electrons there is no electrons electrons may come outside electrons are come outside because of this the metal surface or there may be electrons and only because of this radiation it will come out then there is no charges of electron flow through this gold leaf gold leaf electro scope gold leaf electroscope that's why the positive charge are accumulated in the same leaf to leaf then broadly open in second experiment he conducted the same but one difference one difference insulation 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 non conducting substances and yeah zinc metal was negatively charged already negatively charged so that because of this conducting wire the gold leaf electros scope gold leaf electros scope possess negatively charged negatively charged ions and because of the negatively charged ions it closer to each other only because only because not now when it was happened that's the thing that we are going to see if suppose we are allowing the ultraviolet rays sorry ultraviolet rays uv rays uv rays ultraviolet rays then the metal which will be eject the electrons metals which will be eject the electrons there may be a leakage of electrons so that the number of electrons are very much reduced so that these gold leaf gold leaf electroscope gold leaf electroscope are very close to each other that means it may be closed that's the thing is second experiment thirdly he again conducting the same thing and same phenomena zinc plate already positively charged not initially positively charged in the first case but in third case we already gave positive charge and this gold leaf or the connecting wire 
conduct these positive charges positive charges the cold leaf electroscope cold leaf electroscope cold leaf electroscope consists of positive charges so that it widely opened very close to each other here distance may be increased and get away to each other in this case if you are allowing the ultraviolet rays ultraviolet rays on the disc what will be happen on because of the highest energetic ray when hit the metal surface then naturally there may be emission of electron there may be emission of electron and because of this reason the positive ions are positive charges which will be more denser or which will be added so that again it may be deviated further more and finally by watching this three setup of experiments he concluded that halvax concluded that the zinc metal whatever it may be the condition whenever the ultraviolet rays hit the surface there is only emission of electron there is only emission of electron there is no emission of positive charges that's the thing that he discovered that's a very important suggestion and favor to this earth's experiment then next one fourth third scientist leonard leonard's experiment leonard experiments as per leonard's experiment what is in leonard's experiment that setting is very important Leonard's experiments as per Leonard's experiments sorry L E N E R D S Leonard's experiments Leonard's experiments according to this Leonard's experiment the experimental setup is very easy but most important he considered quartz pulp or quartz tube as shown in the figure inside the quartz bulb or quartz tube or not vacuum that means we are evacuated all the air to the outer side then there is no air inside the quartz bulb then he considered two electrode cathode and anode cathode and anode cathode are connected in the negative terminals and anode which is connected to the positive terminals so what here we are adding one galvanometer now what happened what happened here if there is no emission rays initially the current is zero initially in the galvanometer the current is equal to zero now with the help of some other any devices we are allowing the ray which falls on the surface of the surface of the cathode uv rays uv rays which falls on the surface of the cathode metals what happen this will emit the electrons when uv rays uv rays hit the surface of the negatively charged plate of cathode then it will emit the electrons and these electrons are attracted by the positive anode attracted by the positive anode so that the electron can move from cathode to the 
anode straight away so that the charges of electron are moving further to anode and this circuit was closed and finally if you watching the galvanometer there is no zero current that may be a maximum current and this experiment shows that only because of ultraviolet rays hitting the surface of the cathode and the emission of electron is the causes for this current in case if you are reverse the process reverse the process means you have to consider like this cathode here and anode here if you are allowing cat ultraviolet rays ultra while rays to hit the surface of the anode there is no ejection of any charged particle and the current become zero in the galvanometer current become zero in the galvanometer from this inert section he concluded that the emission of the because of incident of ultraviolet rays of cathode the emission is only electron and the current only because of the current because of this emitted electrons that's the thing very important power to this career scientist very very important and easy to understand at last at last we have to study about the heading photoelectric effect what is in by photoelectric effect what is in by photoelectric effect photoelectric if you think or if you want to explain the photoelectric effect you have to consider one metal okay when the metal was heated by electromagnetic radiation with a suitable wavelength electromagnetic radiation with a suitable wavelength what will be happen then the electron rays which are emitted this is called electromagnetic radiation electromagnetic radiation with the suitable frequency or wavelength what it may be this electromagnetic radiation whenever hit the surface of this metal automatically there may be emission of electron these electrons are generally considered to be an another electron uh, like uh, likewise an uh, ordinary electron but here we are called as this electron as photoelectrons photo electron photoelectrons and the effect is said to be photoelectric effect and the current that was produced and because of the emission of the electron is called ip what is meant by ip photoelectric current now the process is said to be photoelectric effect and the electron ejected by the process is called photoelectron and the current produced in this process is called photo current photoelectric current this is a very very important definition for photoelectric effect then he conducted another a uh, valuable experiments he considered three metals three metals of cadmium zinc cadmium zinc and magnesium and these rays and these rays whenever ultraviolet rays or electromagnetic radiation hit the surface of this metal hit the surface of the metal 
UV rays. Let us consider UV rays. Then it will it it will emit the electrons. Okay, are you clear? The cadmium, zinc, magnesium metal, whenever hit by the ultraviolet rays, then it will emit the electrons. But alkali metals like lithium, cesium, and sodium, lithium, cesium, and sodium, and these three metals are emitted the emitted the electrons by suitable wavelength of ordinary light rays ordinary light rays that is visible light rays but very very important you have to consider one thing when the higher wavelength or higher wavelength light rays hit the surface of these metals then it will emit the electron and these kind of materials are called as called as photosensitive material photo sensitive material photosensitive material this is a very very important concept that was explained by this experiment four scientists are discussed thoroughly i hope you may be satisfied about this concept and the experiments prepare well and do well and get more marks thank you subscribe my channel click the bell refer to your friends thank you